Welcome to TP Talks, PwC's Global Transfer Pricing podcast series. On today's episode, we will be discussing many of the complexities around BEPS Action 13 related documentation requirements and highlight some of the technology tools that can be leveraged. My name is Dana Hart, and joining me today are Matthias Pedavia, the global leader of PwC's Global Coordinated Documentation, or GCD, service offering, and principal in PwC's Miami office. Michael Walter, the central cluster champion for the GCD service offering and partner in PwC's Madrid office. Ogniana Todorova, America's GCD cluster champion and managing director in PwC's New York office. And Brian Shaw, the director of technology initiatives for PwC's global transfer pricing practice. Matthias, since our last Action 13 podcast episode in October of last year, can you provide us with an update on what's new on this front? Yes, uh, thank you, Dana, and, uh, and thank you for, for having us today. Uh, you are correct. Uh, we had our uh, podcast uh, in October last year during our global conference in, in Toronto, and, and definitely the landscape there was uh, quite challenging. And what we covered in our previous podcast was uh, we provided a global overview of, of the countries that had enacted documentation requirements, which ones were uh, trending to that direction, uh, the challenges that we had back then, uh, from a from a people side, technology side, and, and the like. And we also address some master file, local file, and, and country by country uh, requirements and challenges that multinationals, at that point of time, we thought that they, they may be facing. On today's episode, what we are going to do is we will be addressing some of key challenges that clients are facing today in implementing these requirements or, or following these requirements. Again, since October uh, through, through now, we, there are a number of, of um, uh, changes. And also we will, we will highlight some technology tools that we can leverage in the process. Action 13 actually trigger a need, or at least from a client side, of, of expanding or looking for technology uh, solutions or enablers to facilitate this, this exercise. So we will cover that as well. So, but let me start with, with you, Ognana. What, what do you see or what are some of the key challenges that clients are facing today as they implement Action 13 related requirements across multiple jurisdictions? Sure, thank you, Matthias. There are certainly many challenges that companies are facing now, and the main cause for these challenges is the fact that the Action 13 requirements have not been implemented consistently by different tax jurisdictions. Uh, we are now in the midst of preparing transfer pricing documentation for fiscal year 2016, which is the first year where Action 13 has been implemented. And as a transition year, there is a lot to consider. What companies are finding is uh, that there are quite a few nuances and local specificities that need to be taken into account when structuring transfer pricing documentation. While some jurisdictions have implemented all three pillars of transfer pricing requirements, the master file, local file, and CBC, others have only implemented CBC and retained the old uh, transfer pricing documentation requirements. To give an example for this, um, you know, to mention the U.S. and the U.K., Others have implemented the uh, local file requirements in addition to existing uh, transfer pricing documentation. For example, Australia, and the format of the local file there is a form. Another example of differences is with regard to the content of the local file. Uh, China's local file requires having discussion connected to location savings and the value chain in the group in addition to having the local file in local language and expanding to 22 the local uh, transfer pricing information return forms. There's also variance in what and when all this is due and whether documents are required to be filled with the tax authorities, um, in a uh, filled and then uh, filed with the tax authorities or provided upon request within a certain period. I also wanted to address the CBC report itself. While most companies are still working through collecting and analyzing the data to be used for that, and can certainly rely on the OECD guidance uh, on implementation, which came out in April. There has been and continues to be uncertainty and confusion around the CBC notification requirements, the means and timing of information uh, informing uh, local tax authorities on where and when and by whom the CBC report will be filed. There have been a number of instances where, although the intent to Requiring notification has been announced as, a, as the deadline approach, a postponement is announced, and in most cases that is due 
uh, to the fact that the means to notify are yet unavailable. Mm -hmm. uh, most recently, this happened with the Portuguese uh, CBC notification requirement where the deadline was moved from May 31st to October 31st of 2017. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that was announced like two days before, two days before the, the, the deadline. Was due. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so lastly, I also want to mention the state of the exchange of information agreements. The OECD um, has published that there are nearly 60 countries signatories of the MCAA. Most of you know that the U.S. is not one of them. So this means that U.S. multinationals who are planning to file the CBC form voluntarily with the IRS with their 2016 tax return are anxiously waiting the progress of the bilateral exchange of information agreements that the IRS is working on. As of now, the status is that we have four such agreements signed. So the IRS has a significant amount of work to do in this area in a relatively limited time, and taxpayers I know are eagerly watching the progress. So I think in summary, this is the landscape it is a very uneven web, and, and there are a lot of challenges and a lot to juggle for companies. Yeah. Thank you, Agnana. So let, let me pick up on two things that I think are, are relevant. One is that confusion or uncertainty that clients have today. When do I need to notify? If anything, they change the deadlines uh, two days before that. And that, in my personal point of view, that is connected to your other point, which is that the 2016 fiscal year or calendar year is a transition year. So. Having that in mind, both the CYC, uh, but more, most importantly, the, the actual documentation requirements in terms of the content of the local file, master file, so on and so forth, they are also, we, we've seen before, or at least when this came out uh, a couple of years ago, that the, the trend, or at least the idea of many groups, or multinationals, or even advisors, where uh, there was a trend of centralization of the documentation without looking into necessarily into the nuances or peculiarities of a particular country. And as you said, the 2016 is quite the opposite. So let me turn over to you, Michael, because I know that that's something that you and I have been spending a lot of time in many places de describing the differences between what we, what we call a coordinated approach in documentation versus a centralized approach for preparing Action 13 deliverables uh, and, and documentation in general. So if you can comment on that and also some of the common pitfalls that clients might be facing, that will be good. Yeah, sure, Matthias. Thanks a lot for that. So in order to answer uh, that question or in order to address that specific aspect, Matthias, I'll start building on where Ogniana has just left off. Ognana just very well summarized how diverse the TP documentation landscape looks like, i.e. there are very stringent documentation requirements, uh, but also very diverse documentation requirements. Uh, we have a lot of countries that have implemented Action 13, but we also have a lot of countries that have documentation requirements, uh, but have not implemented Action 13, i.e. Uh, they keep on having uh, their old transpiration documentation requirements. And even within the countries that have implemented Action 13, we see a lot of nuances. Ognana was making reference uh, to some CBCR nuances and some differences uh, with regards to the local files. PwC carried out a master file survey to also see how consistent or inconsistent the master file concept has been implemented throughout those countries that have implemented Action 13. And there again, there are some nuances that are worthwhile and relevant to keep in mind for multinational companies when trying to reach compliance. Compliance, of course, is one of the relevant aspects that multinationals want to address throughout the transfer pricing documentation process. But it's not just compliance. That transfer pricing documentation that is prepared is essentially the first line of defense in the event of a tax audit in whatever country you might have transpacing documentation requirements and where that company operates. So in order to be in the best shape possible for that first line of defense purpose, strong local involvement and uh, strong local ownership of the transpacing documentation is definitely what we see as a best practice in order to be well positioned with regard to that first line of defense. And that local ownership is something that is generally observed when there is a coordinated documentation approach rather than a fully centralized one for various reasons. Uh, one is the obvious reason, i.e. you have all of those nuances uh, that is hard to actually keep abreast of through a fully centralized approach. 
but to actually get to a point where you get that local ownership, definitely uh, having some central tasks in a central team, uh, but having local involvement is definitely what we are seeing as a best practice. At the same time, of course, companies want to be efficient, both from a time and cost perspective. Uh, so you absolutely want to centralize what makes sense to centralize, uh, but you need that local flavor and that local validation and ownership in order to be best positioned, both from a compliance as well as a defense point of view. And speaking of defense, as the both of you have very well mentioned before, fiscal year 2016 is the first fiscal year where Action 13 is actually applying to. And so that transfer price documentation is actually being prepared um, throughout this 2017 calendar year. And the CBCR reports uh, will be filed towards the end of this calendar year. We have seen during the last couple of years that there's already quite an increase in transfer pricing disputes. And knowing that, that this first Action 13 documentation is being prepared uh, throughout this calendar year, it is only expected that tax authorities will exchange more and more information with regards to, with regards to transfer pricing and that multiple challenges are likely or are reasonable to expect throughout the, uh, throughout the foreseeable future. So uh, knowing that from a company's point of view, basically knowing that there's going to be an even greater increase in transfer pricing disputes, uh, having perspective, uh, having visibility on exactly where things stand, but at the same time to also be in a position to fully address all of those local nuances that we have been making reference to is critical uh, for any multinational company when dealing with its transfer pricing documentation process. And for that purpose as well, a coordinated approach is something that puts you in a better position to actually address all of those items rather than a fully centralized one, Matthias. Thank you, Mike. I think it's very important and very clear what you just emphasized. So let me pick one thing that you mentioned before. Of course, the consistency is key, the coordinated aspect, but at the same time, as, as we all been mentioning, we have the master file, the local file, the country country reporting, that everything needs to be, and even the local documentation that is not necessarily aligned with the local file, but everything needs to be telling the same story. So the, the challenge here is how, right? And that's where technology comes into play. So, uh, Brian, I wanted to ask you as, uh, as our uh, technology guru <laughs> in, in, in transfer pricing, uh, you and I have been working on, on, on a number of, of uh, situations where clients have been asking for technology, looking at technology. So if you can just give us uh, your perspective on, on how technology is playing an important role in, in managing this documentation or action 15 process, uh, some insights on, on how clients are, are leveraging technology, what technology really means for different clients and what type of uh, solution they're looking for or is more uh, an enabler that, than, than a solution itself. So if you can help us navigate that, uh, that piece, that would be great. Great. Thanks, Matthias. Uh, we really continually look at how technology can impact our transfer pricing practice globally and how we can be more efficient both working within our teams as well as working with our clients. One of the things that we noticed with all of the changes coming out of the OECD really was how can we better implement technology to collaborate and help meet these increased demands uh, within the client tax team. So we interviewed and have worked with hundreds of PwC staff and partners and, and client tax teams to determine kind of what is it that many people are looking for for technology. I think we can all agree that technology has become really important and almost crucial in managing documentation needs. Uh, we I had clearly see a need to help streamline these things, make them more efficient, and uh, you know reduce the amount of effort it takes uh, to do a full set of transfer pricing documentation. Um, but we also noticed that clients really look for a variety of different things. There's really no one size fits all when it comes to what technology is defined as within a client uh, situation. So we found some that are looking for greater ability to manage their workflow or check on the status of projects or see greater transparency into when their local team have completed their aspects of the transfer pricing study, um, looking at different ways for how they can centralize a lot of that work and how they can coordinate that work 
across the rest of their organization. So we kind of took that approach and we created a new proprietary product uh, that we've called GCD Reporter to help assist that. Uh, we really looked at the need of flexibility within that client team of wanting to be able to focus on their documentation and then also make sure that that documentation is consistent and accurate uh, given what Michael just spoke about is documentation being the first line of defense, we want to really make sure that that documentation is as good as it can be uh, to accurately represent what they have for their transfer pricing policies. So consistency in any of those um, inbound disputes, uh, you know, coordination and centralization are all things that were common themes that we talked to our clients about. Um, the tool really does that really well. So we have uh, the ability to really coordinate information from all around the world. We have the ability to improve the workflow. We have streamlined functionality that really lets the documentation be the centerpiece of what you're doing and uh, really encourage teams to collaborate in real time on documents. And so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we've had some really good feedback and uh, yeah, I, I really do feel like technology is an important part of our ongoing kind of plan to tackle the complexities that have arisen from the most recent uh, best actions. Great, thank you, Brian. So I think that we have addressed and covered a lot of uh, the ground and, and important topics in this episode. Uh, specifically, and, and summarizing, we cover a confirmation of uh, this inconsistent implementation in the requirements, and even uncertainty in some of, some of the deadlines and, and, and uh, filing requirements, so, so that creates a, some confusion with, with clients. So the key aspect is there is how to deal with that, stay close to, to those, uh, uh, those requirements and monitor them. The second aspect that was mentioned, uh, it is equally important in my mind, is that the, we need to keep in mind that in 2016 is a transition year for the, all of the organizations, and, and, and that may require a particular uh, way to address it. The coordinated approach that Michael described as a best practice, we truly believe that that's, that's the best practice given the current environment. And last but not least, uh, the importance of technology, as, as Ryan mentioned, that is, is becoming even more relevant. So uh, Dana, I, I will turn over to you to, to conclude the, the episode. Great, thank you. Thank you to our participants and everyone who listened to this episode. If you would like further information about these topics, please email the participants whose email addresses can be found in the description of this episode.